I guess looking at the games tipping off last night and your opponent played, I mean, what you see from the Timberwolves that uh, with new look of Carly, um, without Carly the Towns, a new look of James Harden? Uh, they're still big. <laughs> you know, a really, really big team. Um, you know, it would take a little bit of time to get used to playing with one another. Uh, you could tell. Uh, but as bad as they think they might have played, they still have a chance to win it. And so they're a very, very formidable opponent. You know, uh, and it starts with their size. Also starts with uh, Anthony Edwards and then Julius Randle, you know, and then even the big fella Rudy Gobert. So uh, good team. We're gonna have to uh, figure out a way to keep them off the glass. We're gonna have to figure out a way to protect the paint um, while while getting the shooters too. When you have a obviously Kevin's ready to go. As a coach, do you have to look at him any different when he's coming back in that first game? I mean, I don't know if there's a minutes restriction at all. Do you kind of have to watch out for him? No, no, no minutes restriction. Uh, but uh, you know, obviously, you, you want to be able to make sure that uh, you have a feel for how the players are playing out there. You know, he hadn't played in a while, and you know, he could be out of rhythm a little bit. Who knows? But uh, there, there, there are no restrictions there for him to be on the floor. Mike, having an asset like Keon, though, who I know he got your attention by the, how he played at the end of the blowout in Houston, but staying yeah. ready, and he, you can plug him in if anything happens with the courses. How valuable is that from a coaching perspective? It's extremely, extremely valuable. Uh, he's, you know, he's different than what we have uh, in terms of his skill set, and um, you know, you like the fact that you can throw him into the game and. He can guard multiple guys on the perimeter, uh, different types of players, especially guys that drive in the pick and roll situation, uh, while also being able to knock down an open catch and shoot three. Uh, his deflection rate is off the charts. And then for a guy his size, he's a pretty good rebounder too. So there are a lot of a lot of good things that we see from a, a young guy, Keon, and you, know, you love his readiness because every time we, we called his number and threw him in the game. He seemed to have an impact in some way, shape, or form. And building off that too, you, we, we know you like to stagger your rotations yeah. and stagger your lineup. So, how valuable and, and how well do you think prepared these guys are to play with anybody at any given time with the different looks they'll get? I, I we're getting there, you, you know. And, and I, you know, I, one of the things I reminded our guys that uh, uh, this is a, it's a process, it's a journey, you know, and. and try to think about the outcome every single time we step on the floor isn't realistic for I don't want our guys to do that and part of it is because you know we had a lot of guys injured and we have some guys coming back now and guys that are coming back are probably going to play and so that means that they're going to be lineups that we throw out on the floor that haven't played together at all you know when you, you talk about uh, when you're watching the Timberwolves uh, you know, they were making a little bit of a deal of, hey, this lineup only played once together, you know. And, and really, we haven't played with Kevin in six months in, in the lineup. Uh, uh, we haven't, well, we haven't played with that lineup at all because DeMar wasn't with us last year, you know. So uh, we're going to have some newness to us, and I just don't want our, our, our players, uh, whether we're doing bad, to get frustrated. And if we're doing good, I don't want... I don't want us to be here neither. We got to try to stay even keeled and understand that we keep embracing the process, the details, and the outcome is going to take care of itself eventually the right way, in my opinion. You mentioned some of those guys. How's Trey looking? Do you kind of expect him to possibly be clear to go as well? Yeah, Trey, Trey will be clear to play. Uh, he looks good, but again, you know, it's similar to uh, Cal. He, he had played the whole preseason, so. Uh, so you don't really know what you're going to get, uh, but he'll be guilty of it. How much can you imagine playing a team with that length without him? And obviously Orlando's not around. And I mean, just how much will he be utilized in that way coming back from his injury? All right, you know, during during the minute sheets, because I just got word that he completed his last test just now to be cleared to play, but. Uh, Doing the minute sheets prior to this, like I did a minute sheet last night, and uh, looked a little thin in terms of not not in terms of how deep the team is. I like my team, but trying to say, okay, uh, Kev, you may have to match up with Julius Randle 
for these two minutes here, <laughs> you know, or, or Keon, you may have to match up with Nas Reedy for these. Uh, now, you know, with Trey back, uh, we don't necessarily have to have to do that because Trey can fill the void as a bigger body. You have to see how, you know, that second unit is going to work right now, you know, since you're getting all these pieces back. You know, Keon coming off the bench. What's your thoughts about, you know, getting them all together? No, and that's that's part of it. Uh, you know, I was talking to somebody uh, a little earlier. I, you know, this this is probably the least amount of feel that I have for my group going into regular season, and, and it's due to the injuries, and then the uh, the, the, the addition of Demar too, you know, and, and trying to figure out the rotations and how we're going to use everybody. But uh, I'm excited about it. The guys, you know, we scrimmaged yesterday. And, so we got a little bit better feel of it, uh, but we'll have to kind of wait and see as time goes on because we may do some things tomorrow that we may not do in game five or six. Is that fear or anxiety? Is it what? Is there any fear or anxiety over that? No, no. I, I mean, there's butterflies it's just because of the excitement, you're ready to start competing again, but uh, there's, there's no fear or anxiety. What, how, which does it ever get old? I mean, the season opener. I mean, do you still get those? Oh no, yeah, that's the neat part about it is you know you're still excited. You, you're interested to see what you have, and, and uh, you're excited for the fans and everybody else to kind of rally around you and get this thing kicked off the right way. So it, it never gets old. Man. What's the balance for you between you know wanting to get off to a hot start and expressing the importance of that, but also understanding there could be some growing pains here? No, don't get me wrong. We we want to we want to win. We want to win every freaking game. So as that competitiveness is going to kick in, but at, at the end of the day, I, I guess I don't want to overreact either way, um, especially these first five or so games. And, and I don't want to be in a hole. I don't want to sacrifice losing to figure stuff out. Uh, but in, in, in the same breath, I, I do like our team. And, I, I know I'm not going to panic if we don't start the way that you know I want to. I I'm hoping for us to start. That, that's awesome. Going back to your lack of familiarity with this group, how much then do you rely on the guys who are not just returning from the last couple seasons, but have been here in camp, the Foxes, the Sabonis, guys like that? How uh, much do you rely on them? A, a lot. You know, we always say you know, hey, when you're on the floor, communicate. You know, if you communicate. Uh, give effort and cover for one another. You got a chance, and you know most people apply that defensively, but it's no different offensively. You, you know, it, it, for a guy like tomorrow, we may uh, he may be in a spot to do this action, and because it's new to him, it's not innate. So the other guy just talked to him, hey, pin in, pin in, pin in, pin in, you know, and, and so. He's communicating to him. He's trying to cover for him. And then DeMar can get it from there. So I, our, our vets, the guys that have been here, uh, need to step up and speak a lot, just not on defense, but even on offense as well. If you don't mind sharing, how deep rotationally do you hope to be able to go with this group? Uh, I hope to go 17, because then that means <laughs> hopefully we're up big. <laughs> but, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not quite sure yet, uh, you know, because on, on my sheet right now I have some, okay, maybe this, maybe that. So I, I'm not 100% sure. Anything else, guys?